In this video, we take a look at the latest XRP news. Will XRP be able to fly to the moon? Write answers in the comments. In the midst of the long-running legal fight between Ripple and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, another war rages on social media. Between those who feel the current court ruling has no significant influence on the cryptocurrency business and others who disagree. In an ex post published on October 6, former SEC attorney John Reed Stark referred to Judge Annalisa Torres' recent denial of the agency's motion for an interlocutory appeal as a Pyrrhic victory at Beale, as a Pyrrhic victory at best for the XARP team, calling it a Pyrrhic victory at best for the SARP team. According to Stark, the governing body will still undoubtedly appeal the decision after the trial, and I believe have a good chance of winning due to the fact that the judge has specifically deemed her decision as not precedent for the rest of the Gris scriptovers. Furthermore, he dismissed Judge Torres' most recent decision as precedent on the issue of whether tokens are securities claiming that the court did not hold that offers and sales on a digital asset exchange cannot create a reasonable expectation of profits based on the efforts of us based on the efforts of us. In particular, the former attorney for the SEC said that the court held that based on the totality of the circumstances in this case, including an examination of the facts, circumstances, and economic realities of the transactions. Ripple's programmatic sales could not lead investors to reasonably Expect profits from Ripple's efforts. Emphasis in original. Stuart Alderodi, the blockchain company's chief legal officer, commented on Stark's post, saying, Agree to disagree on the legal impact of Judge Torr's rulings, but you also seem to be saying that XRP uniquely stands as the only digital asset other than BC with judicial clarity as a non-security. We're on the same page now. Simultaneously, after the judge denied an interlocutory appeal motion, lawyer Jeremy Hogan listed a number of possible outcomes for the Ripple v. Sec case, including the regulator moving forward with a trial next April against the individual defendants and an appeal of the case no sooner than 2025, with an appellate ruling no earlier than 2026. Other possibilities include the SEC settling the case against the individual defendants and proceeding with obtaining a final judgment against Ripple, and then appeal, as well as the SEC settling all litigation against Ripple and the individual defendants. During a settlement conference on April 16, 2024, on 6 October 2023, John Reed Stark, a regulatory compliance specialist in the digital arena with a 15-year stint as an cease enforcement attorney, turned to social media platform X, previously known as Twitter, to offer his thoughts on Judge Torres. To offer his thoughts on Judge Torres' recent ruling regarding the sex and X, Stark underlined that the judge's decision to dismiss the sex's interlocutory appeal also indicated that her earlier summary judgment should not be regarded as establishing a legal precedent unless the circumstances of a new case are similar. Stark pointed out that, although this may seem to be a little success for the XRP team, it might ultimately be a hollow victory. He expects the SEC will appeal the verdict after the trial and has a decent chance of prevailing. Judge Torres clearly said that her judgment is not to be regarded a precedent for subsequent instances in the Bitcoin industry, according to Stark. Stark also praised John Deaton and the XRP team for standing up to the sex unilateral law, making techniques. He stated his displeasure with attorneys who switch between law firms and the SEC, implying that such attorneys are unlikely to question the status quo owing to possible conflicts of interest. Stark commended Deaton's team for exposing the sex's unappreciated work in addressing less publicized but critical matters such as microcap fraud and penny stock fraud. Stark on the other hand, was emphatic in noting that Judge Torres' Ripple ruling should not be referenced as a precedent on whether tokens are securities. He emphasized the judge's unequivocal statements that her judgments were based on the Ripple case's unique facts and circumstances. Judge Torres rejected the sex's assertion that the issues posed in the case are crucial legal issues with far-reaching repercussions for several other cases in his judgment, denying the sex motion for interlocutory appeal. She stressed that her judgments are based on applying the Howey test to the facts and circumstances relevant to this Ripple instance. 
Judge Torres went on to add that the sexist citations to other enforcement cases involving other digital assets and firms are not directly comparable owing to differences in facts and economic circumstances. She further clarified the sexist interpretation of her findings, indicating that her order should not be seen as establishing a precedent for future digital asset disputes. The sex had specifically tried to determine whether an issuer's activity on cryptocurrency trading platforms may provide investors with a reasonable expectation of profit. Judge Torres explained that her decision was based on the whole set of facts and economic reality underlying Ripple's programmatic sales rather than a blanket pronouncement on the subject. Any lawyer who uses this ruling as a general rule on token regulation risks ethical ramifications for breaching their duty of transparency, according to Stark. This is because Judge Torres has said unequivocally that her ruling has no precedential weight, save in very limited cases when the facts are similar. Stark continued by warning that referencing Court Torres' ruling in a larger context would be an ethical breach, since the court has explicitly declared that her decision should not be seen as having universal validity. The current triumph is unquestionably a last nail in the coffin. The issue is whether the SEC will abandon the complaint or seek a settlement with Ripple. The court's decision to deny the SEC's appeal confirms an earlier determination that secondary XRP sales are not securities transactions. This demonstrates that Ripple's conduct in selling XRP tokens are not in violation of securities legislation. The judgment of Judge Annalisa Torres dealt a blow to the SEC's legal approach and exposed several significant flaws in its reasoning. The sex's approach was predicated on the notion that some XRP sales might lead to investors anticipating rewards based on Ripple's efforts. However, the court deemed this argument to be devoid of relevant evidence confirming the prior decision. Ripple's CAO, Brad Garlinghouse, didn't miss the chance to remark on this recent event in his ex-post after Deaton. He humorously observed that the C, in its pursuit of applying the Howey test in the case, eventually lost. He mocks the sex's own creation of this criteria, based on which they were slammed in court. They seem to want an exceptional lawyer to comprehend the significance of their own made-up securities legislation. Looking forward, the sex is now in a position where it must await additional findings in the wider ripple action before considering any appeal. The next central hearing is scheduled on April 23, 2024. However, both parties must file pretrial materials by December 4, 2023. According to Jeremy Hogan, the matter will either go to trial or be dropped in April. Furthermore, this judgment enhances the judge's prior ruling, making it more difficult for the SEC to prevail in any prospective appeal. As the current tide is moving towards Ripple and Coinbase, the SECs may be in a stronger position if they act in their best interest to introduce clear crypto legislation. The SEC is facing a critical decision. In a recent discovery, digital asset researcher Anders revealed why the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, chose to pursue Ripple and XRP. The Securities and Exchange Commission's allegations against Ripple in December 2020, citing the sale of XRP as an unregistered securities offering, sparked discussion in the crypto world, especially among XRP fans. Deaton presented a range of thought provoking questions in his thread about the sex's special targeting of XRP. He questioned why the sex would choose a more difficult case, drawing parallels to the early sales of ETH when the Ethereum team launched a simple initial coin offering, ICO. Anders points out that the sex's determination to target XRP is motivated by Ripple's creative use of the digital asset in cross-border settlements. Ripple's use of XRP, according to Anders, undermines the conventional Nostro Vostro accounts and banking paradigm, which has long been a substantial income source for many big banks. According to the study, this disruption threatens to expose established financial institutions' lack of innovation. It is critical to understand that Ripple Labs' primary goal is to revolutionize blockchain payments with XR playing a key role. Ripple removes middlemen in cross-border settlements, reducing delays and excessive transaction fees.